we are talking about trigonometry equations and identities lesson number eight. We're going to be using identities to solve equations. Now we've already learned how to solve simple trig equations. Think about an example like this where we have sine x is equal to one half and we draw a little diagram. We can see that it happens in two places. Um, here it would be 30 degrees and 150 degrees or in radians pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6 and then we can get a general solution if, if that's required. But if we're talking about more complex trig equations, it may require making substitutions that we find on our formula sheet or the ones that we learned in this unit. So this will usually involve expressing the equation in terms of one of the three trig primary trig functions. So we're talking about getting everything in terms of sine or everything in terms of cosine or everything in terms of tangent. Let's take a look at class example one and we'll try and use an identity to help us solve this equation. So we have 2 cos squared x plus 3 sine x equals 0. And this is a second order equation. We can see the squared here. Now we can think of this or see it when we see cos squared. It means cosine of x all squared. And then we have our 3 sine x is equal to 0. Now what we can notice then is that we have cosine here and we have sine. So is there a way perhaps to get everything in terms of either sine or cosine. And what we notice here is we have a cosine squared x. And that perhaps reminds us of my favorite identity. And that identity is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to one. And since that's the case, that means that cos squared x can be written in terms as this, one minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. Since sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, then cosine squared x by itself is 1 minus sine squared x. If that's the case, then we can replace that. We have 1 minus sine squared x, then plus 3 sine x is equal to 0. And let's continue to expand. So we have 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x is equal to 0. Now this looks like a quadratic equation, but let's put it in an ax squared plus bx plus c form. So we have our negative 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x plus 2 is equal to 0. But if we multiply by negative 2, we can see this is going to be 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x minus 2 is equal to 0. And then we have it in ax squared plus bx plus c form, but this may not be intuitive for us. So what perhaps I'd like to do is I'd like to say that let this cool looking x represent the sine x. And in other words, this will become 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Well, if that's the case, we can think about solving this quadratic equation. And we think, okay, a times c. So a times c is equal to 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So we're looking for a product of negative 4, but a sum of negative 3. So how do we find that? So we have negative 4 and positive 1 would probably work. So if we do that, we can split this up. We have 2x squared minus 4x plus x, and that would make our negative 3x and then minus two equals zero. Factor by grouping, so a common factor of this is gonna be two x, and then we have x minus two, and then we have plus an x minus two here. And here we can see that this is going to be equal to x minus two times two x plus one. And now we can replace this x with our sine x again, and we can see that 
we would have this as sine x minus 2 multiplied by 2 sine x plus 1, and that equals 0. Now you could also, from this step, you could have went from this step and think, well, we could have said that this is 2 sine squared x minus 4 sine x plus sine x minus 2 equals 0, and then try and factor that way. But I think that going to the substitution may help our mind think of it as a quadratic a little easier. So solving each of these to equal 0, we have sine x minus 2 equals 0, which tells us that sine x is equal to 2. But there is no solution here, because if you think about the graph of sine x, it only is bounded between negative 1 and 1. So there's no solution there. But what about this one? 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0 means that 2 sine x is equal to negative 1, and sine x is equal to negative a half. I'm going to have to bleed into this section here, but if it's negative a half, I'm going to draw just a sketch of it. Negative half for sine is right there and right there. If we can recognize that if we're just talking about a half, we're talking about a reference angle of 30 degrees or pi over 6. So this reference is pi over 6 here, which means that if we're talking about this domain of 0 to 2 pi, it looks like we're talking about radians, that means in this quadrant 3 we have pi plus pi over 6. So this is going to be 7 pi over 6 as one solution. And this solution is a pi over 6 away from 2 pi. So we're talking about 11 pi over 6. So those are the two answers within this domain. And it doesn't ask us for a general solution. We're only talking about answers for this domain. So these are the two answers right here. OK, in part b, we have this cos of something minus cos of something else is equal to 1. But here we have a cos of an addition of two angles. So if we look to our formula sheet, we'll notice that there's a sum angle formula for cosine. That's going to end up being this, cos of the first angle, cos of the second angle, minus sine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. And then we have a minus, I'm going to put this in huge brackets here because I want to be able to distribute this negative through. But again, we have this identity here where we have a subtraction of two angles here for cos. And so this is going to be cos of the first angle, cos of the second angle. And then here, this is a plus sine of the first angle. And then I'll have to really squeeze it in here but it's going to be sine of the second angle, pi over 6. Okay, so then we have here, the, again, cos x, cos pi over 6, minus sine x, sine pi over 6. And we'll get to evaluating these in a second. But then it's minus cos x, cos pi over 6, and then minus this, minus sine x sine pi over 6. Now you may go ahead and evaluate each of these if you like, but I'm going to notice that there is a term here, and then you're subtracting, so you're subtracting that same term right here. And then you have this term that's the same as that one, but it's there's a negative in front of this one and a negative in front of this one. So this ends up being, this cancels out, and we have negative sine x sine of pi over 6 minus another sine x sine pi over 6. So here we can say that this is negative 2 sine x sine pi over 6. We make the substitution then, we have negative 2 sine x, and sine pi over 6 here is equal to 1 half. 
So now this half times this negative 2 then is going to be equal to negative 1. So we have negative sine x. Now what we've done here is all of this was all just the left side. So what I should have done was perhaps make it equal to 1 all the way down here. But the right side here, the right side is equal to 1. So what we're really solving for is that negative sine x, the simplification of all that left side, is equal to 1. Therefore, sine x is equal to negative 1. And let's see if we can find the answer in this 0 to 2 pi domain. So if we draw this negative 1, it happens right there. And here, so we can say x is equal to 270 degrees, or in other words, in radian measure, 3 pi over 2. And there is the answer to be. Let's take a look at class example number 2 and consider the equation 4 minus 7 sine x is equal to cos 2x. The first question is, which of the three identities for cos 2x would be the most efficient replacement for solving this equation? So here we have this cos 2x, which there is a replacement for if we look at our formula sheet. Now there's three, right? There is that it's cos squared x minus sine squared x. We also have uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared x. I believe the other one is 2 cos squared x minus 1. So if we look at those, which one of these three is going to be the most useful? Well, if we notice here, we have a sine on this side. So I think it would be most useful then to have only sines. And so this is the one we're probably going to use. This one only has sines. This one has cosines and sines. This one has only cosines. But this one only has sines. So I think that would be the most useful. So the 1 minus 2 sine squared x is going to be the most useful. And why? Because it only involves sines. OK, let's determine the general solution to the equation 4 minus 7 sine x equals to cos 2x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just find it where x is in, in the domain 0 to 2 pi. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because then I can use the periodic nature of the trig functions to help us find the rest of the general solution. So let's go ahead then. And the left side here, we have 4 minus 7 sine x. And the right side, this cos 2x, can be replaced with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we're almost there. Now we have only sines here. Now let's bring all the like terms to one side and see if we can get it into an ax squared plus bx plus c form. So let's bring this by adding two sine squared x's to both sides. And so we get 2 sine squared x plus 4 minus 7 sine x is equal to 1. Now I'll rearrange this. This is going to be 2 sine squared x minus 7 sine x plus 4. And let's bring this 1 to the other side as well. So we'll subtract 1. And now it equals 0. And simplifying just the numbers here, we have 2 sine squared x minus 7 sine x plus 3 is equal to 0. Again, we have this second order trig equation, which I think we can probably simplify by making a substitution. Let's let x represent a sine x. And now this would become, this equation would become 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Let's see if we can solve this, and then we will replace x, this, this x, with a sine x when we're closer to a factored uh, form. So here, ac 2 times 3 is equal to 6. We're looking for a product of positive 6, but a sum of negative 7. So what two numbers are going to do that? Well, I think it's going to be negative 6 and negative 1. So we split that middle term then. Negative 6x minus x 
plus 3 equals 0. Then we can factor, common factor here, 2x, oh, by the way, this should be squared. I forgot that earlier. So 2x times x minus 3, and then minus, this is x, and then here, just be careful here because we have a minus. I'm factoring out the minus, so this is still a minus 3. That equals 0. And now I can factor by grouping here. So we have an x minus 3 multiplied by a 2x minus 1 because there's one of those. This is equal to 0. Well, this tells us then that we can replace this and we can say, this is equal to sine x minus 3 times 2 sine x minus 1, and that equals 0. I've done most of the work here by letting x represent that sine x and then factoring that, which is equivalent. Like we also could have said from here, we could have said that is 2, 2 sine squared x minus 6 sine x minus sine x plus 3 equals 0 and then we would have ended up with this piece and then uh, factoring it again we would just get this same thing again but again I think it's easier to do the substitution and think of it in x's first now if you solve it for this to be equal to 0 we have sine x minus 3 equals 0 which means that sine x is equal to 3 and again, sine x we know is a bounded curve between negative 1 and 1, the standard one here. And that means that there's no solution for this. And we can even check with the graphing calculator as well. There won't be a solution for that one. But here, if we let 2 sine x minus 1 equal 0, we have 2 sine x is equal to 1. And if we continue here, it's going to be sine x is equal to 1 half. Now what I'm going to do is solve this in just one period. So here, sine x is equal to a half here with a reference angle of pi over 6. If this reference is pi over 6, then this is going to be angle is 5 pi over 6. Therefore, we have two solutions in the domain of 0 to 2 pi. So we have pi over 6, x can equal pi over 6 or x could equal 5 pi over 6 and would still be a half. But we're not done our general solution, right? This is just one of the solutions in one period. This is another solution in one period. And now what we're going to do is add the integer multiple of that period. So we have 2 pi n, where n can be any integer. And again, this one also has an integer multiple that can be added to that as well. So this is the general solution that x can be either pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and being any integer or x can be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n with n being any integer. Let's do an investigation here of the validity of dividing by a variable expression. Now this is just an example and we're just trying to discover something here so you might think oh uh, we're doing something wrong with, right away but we're trying to show you uh, what is going on here. So let's consider two trig equations. We have this one here sine x equals cos x and then a second equation on this column sine 2x is equal to cos x. The domain is 0 to 2 pi and we have the student's attempt to solve the equations. So let's complete the work. Just assume that that's what we're going to do here and let's see if we can get an answer. So in this case we had sine x equals cos x and this student decided to divide by cos x on both sides. So we have sine over cos, which is tan, cos x over cos x, that's equal to 1. And so that we can say then x would be equal to pi over 4, or other words, 45 degrees, because that's what makes y over x equal to 1. And we also have 5 pi over 4. Now, if you think about it here, tan, it's positive here and it's positive here. That's why we had to do this reference angle pi over 4 and we had to go into the third quadrant because tan is positive in the first and third quadrant. So we have those two answers.
Let's take a look at this part two here. We have sine 2x is equal to cos x. And you may notice that this student uh, might have made an error, but let's just go through the work and then we're going to discover an, um, a, a concept involving uh, dividing by a variable, variable expression. So we have 2 sine x cos x, which is an identity to sine 2x. And then we have cos x, of course, on the right. We're going to divide by cos x here. This student decided to divide by cos x. Oh, so when you do that, you can cancel out this one. You would have 2 sine x, and then it's equal to 1. And then dividing by 2, you have sine x is equal to 1 half. And when you see that we have a half here, right there and there, then the reference angle, the reference angle is going to be pi over 6. And therefore, x here, in this particular case, according to this student's work, then is going to be pi over 6. And with this reference angle pi over 6, this is also 5 pi over 6. So we get these two answers. All right, well, let's check our work. So in order to check the work, this student used the intersect feature on the graph calculator to determine the solution. And here they are below. And we have this window, 0 to 2 pi, 30 degrees scale, negative 2, 2, and we're going to label the graphs shown in each grid and write the solutions to them. So here, this is our negative 1, this is our positive 1, this is positive 1, this is negative 1. And we can see that we have a scale of pi over 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 2 pi here. And same thing, this is 2 pi here. Okay. So when we notice it, then we have this one. We find that this is going to be pi over 4. Okay, sine x equals cos x. Pi over 4, and there's also another one where it intersects, and that's at 5 pi over 4. Okay, we get those two answers. When we take a look at this one, it seems that we have four answers. So the first answer here is going to be at pi over 6. Then the next answer is going to be at pi over 2, right there. And then we have 5 pi over 6. And we also have another answer at 3 pi over 2. So then if you ask yourself, does the algebraic solution in A agree with the graphical solution in B? 1. Well, here this is pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And that's pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So yes, it does. So that's a yes. What about in 2? Well, in 2, we have two answers, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But in the graph, using the graph and calculator, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 answers. So this is definitely a no. There's, there's four answers here and only two answers there. So let's take a look at this note. The algebraic solution in A is correct. But the algebraic solution in 2 is not complete. This is because the division by cos x is valid in A, where sine x equals cos x, but not valid in part 2, where 2 sine x cos x equals cos x. So the question is, when is dividing by cos x valid and when, it, when is it not? Or in other words, under what circumstances in general is division by cos x not valid? And the answer is this, that when cos x is equal to 0, then division by cos x is not valid. Because then you'd be dividing by 0. This is a rule in math that we cannot break. So in part of our solution, then, one of the steps that we should be using is uh, determining whether or not, in this particular case, that cos x can equal 0 in solving this equation, sine x equals cos x or sine 2x equals cos x. So consider the solution to cos x equals 0. For example, x is equal to pi over 2. So if x equaling pi over 2 is a solution to either equation, then the step in which the student divides by cos x is not valid because then she would be dividing by 0. But if x equals pi over 2 is not a solution to either left side or the right side, then the step in which the student divides by cos x is valid 
because then you're not dividing by a non-zero value. Sorry, you're not dividing by zero. You are dividing by a non-zero value, which is an okay thing to do. So let's check. Is x equaling pi over 2 a solution to either sine x equal cos x or sine 2x equals cos x? Well, let's check this one. Is if we think sin, is sine uh, pi over 2, is that equal to cos of pi over 2? Well, sine pi over 2 is 1, and cos pi over 2 is 0. So this is, yeah, certainly it's not equal. So this pi over 2 is not a solution for this one, which means that dividing by cos x could be a valid step here. Now what about this, sine 2x equals cos x? Well, we think sine of 2 times pi over 2 is going to be sine of pi, and that's 0. And what about cos of pi over 2? Cos of pi over 2 is also 0. Since the left side here equals the right side, when I use pi over 2 in here, then that means that it satisfies this equation. So it's a solution to this equation, and therefore I cannot divide by cos x. And what we're really checking then is if we're using an x that makes this cosine x equal to 0, we can't divide by it because that would be a division by 0 and then that throws things into a whole big mess. So with all of this in mind then, how do we solve this equation? How do we solve sine 2x equal cos x correctly if we know that here x cos x could be 0 and we can't so we can't divide by it so let's take a look well what we're going to do is we're going to take this and use an identity to figure out what that is this is 2 sine x cos x and that equals cos x but then after that instead of thinking about dividing we're going to bring everything to one side so 2 sine x cos x minus cos x, and now that equals 0. Now that's brought over to one side, we're going to factor. So we notice there's a common factor of cos x. So we have cos x, and then brackets, 2 sine x minus 1, and that equals 0. Now that we have it in factored form, we can take each factor and equate that to equal 0. So the cosine x could equal 0, or this bracket could equal 0. So cos x equaling 0, then we think, okay, if we draw this out, there's there and there. Uh, so x here is going to be equal to pi over 2 in radians, or 3 pi over 2. You can also think, you know, if you use your graphing calculator, you could say, that x is equal to cos inverse of 0, and you should be able to get 90 degrees if you're in degree mode, or pi over 2 uh, in radian mode. So there we have it for cos x. Now this is just in one uh, within that one period of uh, 0 to 2 pi, uh, that one interval. But here if we think about the other one, 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0, then 2 sine x is equal to 1, sine x is equal to 1 half. And again, we can draw a little, little diagram, and we can say that x here then, the reference angle will be pi over 6. And so x can be pi over 6, or x could be 5 pi over 6. Remember, when we're talking about sine, we're talking about we can think of it as y value, so we're taking a look at this top half. So the solutions to this, this equation then is that x can be equal to pi over 6, pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, or 3 pi over 2.